So I have a story for you guys. I decided to join a Muslim dating app and here's what happened. So I saw this ad for a Muslim dating app called Muz. By the way, very cute name for a Muslim dating app. Very clever. Well done, well done. My first thought was, wow, I didn't even know this existed, but it makes sense. There's Jew date for Jewish people. There's Christian mingle for Christians. It makes sense that there would be an app only for Muslims. I mean, there's a lot of these dating apps that are intended for specific communities, right? Even beyond religion, there's, um, you know, there's Soul Swipe for black people. There's, what's another one? <laughs> Obviously there's Grinder for gay people, right? So this is a thing, right? These dating apps target specific communities. Now you're probably thinking, why did you join a Muslim dating app? I am half Turkish. My whole dad's side of the family is Muslim. I'm not religious myself, but if, you're, if your family is, right, and you come from a culture that is predominantly Muslim, it ends up being, how do I explain this? Kind of like how a lot of Jewish people will say they're not religious, but they're culturally Jewish. I would say in a lot of ways, believe it or not, I am culturally Muslim. You know, like certain things like holidays that you celebrate with your family, certain, dare I say, values. I'm also just a clean freak like borderline obsessive with hygiene. And that's actually a very big part of Islam. Anyway, now I'm going off on a tangent, but I rest my case. I feel comfortable joining a Muslim app. I don't feel like I'm, I'm you know, I don't feel like one of those white people trying to get into uh, Howard University or something, okay? So there's that. Plus I have a weakness for Middle Eastern men. So like, I just had to try this. So I'm setting up my profile, right? It's kind of fun in the beginning, like any other app. I'm, you know, I'm a man, okay. My height, 5'9", okay. I'm 32 years old, here's my photos. And as I keep going, I'm like, well, that's kind of weird that they never asked who I'm seeking. Like, am I, am I a man seeking a man? Am I? So the more steps I go through, the more I realize it's not gonna come up. Like, it's a pretty significant part of the equation and if, if I'm now at a step where I'm entering my height and stuff, like those are <laughs> those are less important steps to get there, right? But naively, I finish setting up my profile and I'm like, maybe, maybe it'll be <laughs> on the last page. I get there and suddenly I see women. Suddenly I see women that I can swipe through and I'm crestfallen that I don't see any men. I'm not wanted here. I'm sure some of you are watching this thinking, what did you think? It's a religious community. I mean, if you're, if you're a Muslim person only seeking another Muslim person, that already means that you're very like old school, looking for something very traditional. Maybe I'm naive, maybe I'm delusional, but I just feel like in 2024, how is there any app out there that is not inclusive of gay people. You can be Muslim and be gay. Obviously there's a taboo element, obviously there's a stigma, but this app apparently, according to its website, has millions of users. So I was both shocked and really like disheartened by the whole thing. By the way, think about how amazing and revolutionary that would be for an app like that to promote to a gay audience and to use that as a marketing angle. In the same way, by the way, that like when Bumble first came out, it was supposed to be a female forward app. Like women get the control with this app because they have to send the first message, right? Or the same way that Lyft, the riding app, just like Uber, how it separated itself from Uber as a competitor was that it was again, very female customer oriented. Think about how revolutionary it would be for one of these apps to be like, yeah, we're all about Muslims meeting, but we're very inclusive of gay Muslims and we, we want that to be a part of our messaging. So as quickly as I created an account, I ended up deleting my account because obviously there's nothing, here. I'm not wanted here. Why? I don't wanna go somewhere where I'm not wanted. But it's kind of heartbreaking for me to think that like as a gay person, none of these apps really cater to us, right? None of these really mainstream apps like the household names like Tinder, Bumble, Hinge, none of them were created with gay people in mind. I mean, going back to Bumble, right? I've talked about this before years ago on this channel that, okay, it's female forward, right? But then what about lesbian couples? What about 
gay male couples, if they were really clever, you know, clearly they don't hire many gay people because if they were really clever, they would find a way to cater to that community in the same way that they built an entire uh, brand around focusing on the female customer. So in the same way that the app is designed where the female, I hate using the word female, it sounds so clinical, where the woman reaches out first, right? They could do that same thing with gay people by having, let's say, top or bottom as a selection um, criteria so that the bottom reaches out first, right? Like, it's crazy to me that these modern apps haven't thought to be this innovative with a huge community that presumably has to make up, I don't know, let's say at least 10% of their, their user base, I, I would think maybe even higher, right? Because I would assume that gay people are more willing to identify as gay on an app versus let's say, I don't know, a census, a government poll or something, right? Like gay people flock to apps because then there's no confusion. They don't have to wonder if if the other person's gay, right? That they look at walking down the street. So it's just shocking to me that, you know, it's 2024 and that these mainstream apps still operate this way. And really the only apps that have been designed with gay people in mind are apps like Grindr. And for that, thank you Grindr and thank you for the gay people clearly behind Grindr. It's nice that we have some kind of app with us in mind. At the same time, those apps have their own issues in that they were kind of designed to lean into the stereotype of the gay thing is just about sex, right? I mean, yes, of course you decide how you use an app, but literally the way it was designed, Grinder and apps like it, Jacked, uh, Scruff, all those. With GPS-based apps, what happens is it kind of leans into this um, instant gratification thing like, oh my God, he's, you know, he's 300 feet away or he's 3000 feet away, he's in walking distance. And also you can reach out to people directly, right? So you skip a few steps, but then what happens is it attracts a more impulsive audience. I don't know that a gay, truly dating oriented app could survive uh, in this market. There's so many apps out there. Grinder is such a big like shark in that, in that tank, we'll say, to use, to continue with that analogy. But again, this leads me back to Tinder and Bumble and Hinge and all those apps. It's like, they could get so much farther by leaning into how do we cater to this community? I actually met a Jewish girl a few weeks ago at a, at a birthday dinner. And she told me that she doesn't use apps like Jew Date because the audience is so limited, but she'll do the paid accounts on apps like Hinge and Bumble so that she can select uh, only Jewish guys. So that goes to show you like people will keep using these huge apps because they have such a big audience. They have such a big user base, but what are they really doing to to um to cater to populations like the gay population the gay user base that they have as always i want to know what you guys think about this so leave a comment below i want to hear your take on this